Right, uh, good afternoon. Um, this is the New Year's Eve podcast for the, uh, the Station Rollers. Um, it's our fifth episode. Now, I just want to uh, introduce you to uh, Wayne, as always. Good to see you all. And you'll notice we've got somebody else with us today, um, and our latest guest. So it's uh, it's Tim Fenson from uh, Pride Builder, um, absolute lifeline of the club. So, and thank you ever so much for joining us, Tim. Um, no problem. Thanks very much for having me on. No worries. So we're going to do our usual things. We're going to do our wine o'clock. Um, we're going to do a, a rundown of uh, who the station rollers actually are. And then we're going to have a chat with Tim a little bit more about the Pride Builder, etc. Um, so there's a couple of things I want to say before we sort of move on, on to wine o'clock. First thing, Wade, it's something to make out of my old hat. So, and I'm feeling a little bit um, upset about he, he sort of admit, so you, you're going to have to put up with my bald head and the big shiny bit that's on the top. I was trying to be good to the viewers, but Wade has just ruined it for you all. So I'm really, really sorry. Um, and the next thing I want to mention is BMW UK um, have actually said that they might feature our podcast um, and might put it out on some of their social media stuff. So I've sent, we've had a couple of emails that have gone backwards and forwards today. Um, and hopefully BMW will um, put us on their socials. So fingers crossed we get a bit more exposure from that. Um, and I just want to say thank you to the guys at BMW um, for servicing my car and for giving me tickets for the New Year's Eve event tomorrow night. So happy days. Good stuff, um, Barney. Yeah. <laughs> that's what it's all about. Um, so yeah, so let's start with Tim because Tim's uh, expressed an interest in our wine, wine o'clock. Um, so over to you, Tim. What are you drinking today, mate? Uh, today I will be drinking something that I've been drinking all over Christmas and it's Echt Schoenkala Rausch beer. Brilliant. Which is all the way from Bamberg in Munich, which is somewhere that uh, myself and Reese Griffiths go uh, on occasion. And we go all the way there just to drink that. Got some bottles to drink over Christmas. Happy days. Nice one. I, mean, I know that Reese likes a, a real ale and a German ale and stuff like that. Those, so, those yeah. are. Brilliant. Don't, like them, bro. Don't, don't pay. <laughs> Do you want to go next, Barney? I think uh, the viewers want to know what you're on today. Well, are you still drinking your special cocktail, Wayne? Well, no, because, I mean, oh, I went for it on them the other day. Two or three down, no problem. So I've laid low for a little bit. You know what I mean? I've stuck to Pepsi Max and water today, just separately. Because yeah. you can't live on the edge every day, can you? I don't so know, I'm speaking it. of living on the edge, speaking of living on the edge, Barney, why don't we go on to what you've been drinking? Well, um, obviously, with it being the New Year's Eve episode, I've made it a little bit um, and a bit enjoyable for myself today. So I'm, I'm already a, a couple of drinks in. So what we've got here is we've got mulled wine, but topped up with three barrels brandy. So you put about half a cup of mulled wine in and then throw about half a cup of brandy in the top. Just it's nice and warming, nice warming drink. It gets the blood flowing. So as we carry on, the more I drink, you'll see my face goes a little bit redder as well. That's just one of the side effects. If that happens to you, you do need to push on. Um, and I'd like to say from uh, from from the station roaders in general, responsible drinking kids. You've got to remember that. So two or three of them, and don't drive for about a week afterwards. So you'll be then you'll be okay. All right. So. Um, We'll move on from that. Today, sorry, Barney, today could be the first day where I end up being the carer. Because we <laughs> you two on them drinks, it's a good job one of us stays over. <laughs> I mean, to be fair, you could be designated driver then, mate. That's absolutely fine by me. Got it. <laughs> job always made for. Super. Right, so what I'm going to do now, uh, I'm going to pass over to you, Wayne, because I want you to give us a rundown of the station rollers and what we're actually about. Because some people that are watching this might not know what we're about. So off you go, pal. Okay. I say we we mentioned the station rollers, you know, these station rollers on YouTube and that type of thing. So we just thought today we'd actually tell you what the station rollers are, where it's come from. And basically it was created as mainly a Facebook group in late February 2018 by the one and only uh, John Keating, or JK as he's known. And it was created at a time where the club was going through a little bit of a, let's just say there was 
a bit of a debate on either side. We're not going to go into the ins and outs. And it was just created as a place where fans could speak a bit more openly, you know, and it's moved on from that to basically a more light-hearted vault area where the language can be a bit blue, you can discuss whatever you want, and obviously we talk about Swindon. And also from that, it's moved on to quite a fundraiser. We've got the hoodies that me and Barney are wearing. We've sold plenty of them. Yeah, we've had version one and version two. We've done T-shirts. We've done mugs, the Christmas mugs. We've done cups. I've got a lot of flat for that because people was expecting with an handle. I'm not sure what all that was about. So we've done that. We've done badges. We've done the station or the Swinton Rugby League signs, which look fantastic. So get yourself one of them if you've not got one. And from there, we've basically gone on to do what I was really proud of. And I think it was about 40 people chipped in, around £20 each. And we got, obviously, over £800 to sponsor two players from last year's or this season's just gone team, which was Kenya, sorry, Kenga and um, Woods, who's no longer with us. And... Sorry, have I said that right? It was Woods, weren't it? Yeah, yeah, it was Woods, yeah. Yeah, Woods, sorry, yeah. And like I say, we so we put £800 straight into the club, sponsoring the two players. And all the other funds that we've raised through the other things we've mentioned, we've passed most of that over to the Pride Builder. Obviously, adding a bit on top of the sales to go directly to Pride Builder. So that is roughly what the Station Robbers is. It's 195 members strong in the, in the Facebook group. And you can find it on Facebook. And, you know, if you pass the vetting uh, period, you'll get in. It's easy. Yeah. So, basically, it all ends up going into Pride Builder. So, we'll pass you back over to Barney, and we can start chatting to Tim about the real reason that we're here. Yeah, I, th- I think if I could add one thing to what the station road is at, I think um, it's a little bit different than the family page because um, the guys that run the family page do a fantastic job in spreading sort of the word of the, the, the word of the club, whereas we're sort of the voice of the fans almost, um, and we won't we, we don't have fans of other clubs in there. So if if, if you want to come on and say oh, salt and maggots this that and the other, you're not going to get any flack for saying that because everybody's going to go yeah we agree with you, um, and it's a like a let's all laugh at Rochdale and things like that. So. Um, it's it's a little bit different than the family page. Uh, the family page has definitely, for me, definitely got a big part to play within the club. But from the supporters' point of view, I mean, we refer to each other as the um, the unofficial official supporters club um, because we're officially supporters, but we're not linked to the club in any way other than throwing a few quid their way. So what I want to do now, Tim, is I'm going to bring you into it. Um, do you want to tell us a little bit about Pride Builder, um, a little bit about the history of it, where it sort of come from, and then sort of what we what the Pride Builder do with the with the club, etc. Certainly, yeah. Uh, it all started. It all started back in uh, 2018 when we had a we had a meeting at uh, Pendlebury Legion, and uh, we all we all stood up and we all had a say about uh, you know where the club was going, and uh, at that at that point in time, it was only going one way, and it was. Uh, Really, it wasn't looking very good for us. Uh, and in, in actual fact, uh, the Pride Builder wasn't, wasn't actually my original idea. Uh, my original idea, if for anybody who was there, is I stood up and uh, had an idea about having a war chest. And basically, uh, what it was, was people would uh, donate money in monthly and it would be like an extra winning bonus for the team. So that... <clears throat> Uh, if the team won, they could draw money from the from the war chest to pay them extra, maybe a bit of more motivation. Because there was a lot of there was a lot of talk at the time that that the players weren't motivated for because they weren't getting paid, and yeah. you know yeah. they, they had uh, these yeah. you know financial worries. Anyway, so although a few other people have mentioned about having this kind of uh, squad builder fund, let's say there's, there's other teams. Lee have got one, uh, Batley have got one, mm. that I know about. Uh, but nobody was actually doing anything about it. So 
one night I thought, do you know what? Somebody's got to start the ball rolling. So uh, I put my hand up and I thought, right, let's let's go for it. Uh, there was no way I was ever going to do it on my own uh, because that's uh, that's just madness when you're involved in finances and one person. So I asked uh, Reese Griffiths, uh, who many of you will know, uh, to uh, whether he wanted to get, to get involved, which he did. And then uh, I sent a message out asking whether anybody else wanted to get involved and uh, do it uh, three ways. And Dave Roberts contacted us. Uh, I only knew Dave a little bit. Uh, I've known Reese for about 40 years. Uh, I, I knew Dave a little bit, but I knew that he'd been previously been on the board and everything. So he'd have a bit more uh, idea of what was going on that way. So we met up one night in the uh, Emory Boddington's, uh, like you used to be able to do back in the day when you could go in in pubs and things. Uh, and we uh, we kicked the uh, the idea around, had a good chat, and, and off it took. Uh, we were taking cash by April of that year, and we were taking uh, bank transfers uh, by May. And uh, it's grown. It was quite a slow trickle at first, but it's grown steadily. At the minute now, we're uh, at 108 members, which is fantastic. Uh, you can pay monthly, you can, some pay bi-monthly, some pay annually. Uh, we've lost we've lost eight members recently due to COVID. Uh, but like I say, 108 members, we've got over the 100 mark. It's brilliant. We currently take about £2,000 a month. Wow. Uh, which is... I think, um, I think that even them numbers already from such a small start in a short amount of time to get that amount of people and that amount of money regularly every month. I think it's a fantastic start already, isn't it? It's, yeah, it's, it's steadily growing. Uh, not by, you know, not in, uh, in great leaps and bounds, but as people hear about it and people realise what it's about, then, you know, they, they, uh, they send us the message and say, how do I join? Uh, the, the, the stipulations that we have is that you do not pay any more than you can actually easily afford. We don't want anybody paying money in and leaving themselves short for anything. That's not good enough. Uh, so you've got yeah. to be able to reasonably afford what you, you put in every month. We ask you to do it monthly because it's the easiest way for us to be able to commit to the, the club a, a monthly amount for uh, certain players. Uh, so it's a, it's a better way of doing it by a bank transfer, better for us. Brilliant. So I mean, I, uh, that is the way, sorry, Tim, that is the way I actually do it. I, I'd simply do £10 a month, which is a, you know, a, an affordable amount. Like I say, it goes out the direct debit. It's no hassle. I filled the form in once, it's done. And obviously, it's good that you have that regular income that you know. So where would you say, what, where does Pride Builder money go? What is the specific thing it is spent on? The money is, is wholly and solely spent on players' wages to supplement the squad. Okay. Uh, there, there isn't... We can... Uh, every, the members uh, have their own page on uh, Facebook and there's a monthly update on it and you can see where every penny is spent. And there, I, I, can, I can guarantee you now that not one penny has been spent on anything, including... Anything as low as stationary and postage, we do that. The three of us uh, do that. Uh, everything solely to the club, on players, not on anything else from the club. If the club said, well, you know, uh, we're a bit short on uh, on Cyril's wages uh, this week or whatever, you know, we've got to pay. Mm. No, it's players only. Brilliant. Which, as a fan, that is what I like. Because obviously we all know everything we pay eventually goes to the field, or some of it does. But that is what I like about Bride Builder. I directly feel like I could help get a better player for the club on the field, which is obviously that's what every fan wants and it's the best possible squad you can get. Yeah, uh, the, the, the money sort of like uh, dropped off at the minute due, due to COVID, due to having no games uh, during the season, yeah. so we don't get raffles, name cards, things like that. Uh, we haven't been able to run uh, the race night. We've run two race, I think it's two race nights now, mm. but, which is tremendously successful. We had them over at uh, 
Booth Town, uh, British Legion, and we made just short made, made just short of a thousand pounds on the last one, which is fantastic. Fantastic. Uh, we have we've uh, we've had a quiz in uh, in the Lion in the back room uh, that raised uh, you know a, a goodly sum for it. We have name cards uh, that go round, but no coaches, no games, no name cards really. Uh, yeah. We we have uh, we, we do raffles. We've, we've raffled uh, meals out, you know, uh, corporate corporate days. Uh, we have uh, donations that have come through that we auction as well to make money that way. Uh, we've just started doing a few sale things. Uh, again, we've just uh, very popular snoods that have, uh, have just sold. Uh, again, all the profits go to uh, go to the club. Uh, even if. Oh, even to the fact that I mean, I, I've paid out to buy all the snoots because uh, we don't take the money out of the out of the private that even to buy things to make money on. So we have to lay it out ourselves, and, and that comes back in. Yeah. But it's brilliant. Perfect. Station Rollers, as you said before, Wayne, brilliant. They've donated somewhere around a thousand pound since we started. We sold cups, signs, sweatshirt. I'm looking at my notes here. Can you see me Bob? <laughs> Uh, sweatshirts, uh, stuff like that. There's other people as well. Uh, they've sold placemats uh, and, and uh, water bottles. The money's come to us. Uh, uh, wax melts. I don't know what a wax melt is, to be honest, but uh, Sarah sells Yeah, them. you do, Tim. Yes, I'm, you do, no. <laughs> I'm not a candle guy. I'm not a candle guy. Uh, there's a butterfly, butterfly scrunchies. Uh, you might have seen them advertised. Uh, that's a little uh, thing that I had, Amy, a little business I had, Amy, started up. Your daughter and she uh, puts money from that into uh, Pride Builder as well. And there's, uh, there's other donations that come in from fabulously uh, generous people. Uh, they, they asked me not to say who they are, but there's, there's donations of, of a thousand pounds have come in. Uh, wow. You, you just, it's quite humbling, really. Uh, when people are sending yeah. uh, donations in like that to uh, to help the club in this way. Yeah, that's brilliant. So when you get all that money together, firstly, like, let's say which players have Pride Builder paid towards in the past and are still paying towards our new players, who are them players that Pride Builder has directly paid towards? Well, we started off uh, really just uh, funding, because we didn't have that much money, we were just uh, part funding uh, DRs from Wigan. Uh, mm -hmm. Josh Woods, for example, uh, we paid quite a, quite a bit of money out for Josh Woods. In fact, most of the kids that you see played in Wigan's first team, now that have broke through, uh, they, they've, all, they've all come to us at some stage. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. And we've, uh, you know, we've uh, funded quite a few of them. Uh, then we started paying... Uh, for a few of the players for, for the full season, Gavin Benyon, we paid uh, money towards Gavin Benyon, Oscar Thomas, and uh, Will Hope mm. were the three people that uh, that we paid the, the contracts for. We did put our hand up to try and bring uh, other players to the clubs. Uh, at the time, the, uh, the chairman used to phone us up and say, trying to sign a player, well, how can you help us out financially? Uh, we went for uh, Lewis Beanek at one point. I don't think I'm giving much away. Junior Sal, uh, Jared Samet, not in this last rumour, but a previous rumour. Uh, we tried to uh, try to help out, but they didn't get those uh, secure those players' services. Uh, but on top of those, uh, we've we've done past uh, past loan deals. Uh, Gregson. Uh, Adam Lawton, Sammy Kabula, Liam Paisley, who was, I, I thought, value for money. Liam Paisley for us was yeah. absolutely mm. out of this world, especially over at Toulouse. Uh, when he, he got in that trick for us, when we beat Toulouse at Toulouse. Mm. Uh, Rob Fairclough, Ellis Burgle, big, big list. Yeah, and, yeah. and this year's, this year's I, I, I like to call them uh, the 21. 2021 stable for uh, Pride Builder this year. Martin Rijad, Sam Brooks, Liam Forsyth, Will Hope, 
and Geronimo, Geronimo <laughs> Doyle. Well, would, I, I don't think we would have had all those five players in uh, in at the club for next season without Brian Wilder. I think the club would agree with that as well. So it's a massive round of applause for everybody that puts a, a, any single penny in. Yeah, Brian Wilder, you've brought them in. The interesting thing for me is every single player that you mentioned there has definitely strengthened our squad. And I think that's the amazing thing about it. It's not just we're not just with the pride builder isn't just um, bringing your rank and file players in. Every player that we're bringing in with the help of the pride builder, builder sorry, is a real top notch player in our league. And we've, we've all we've, we've also actually we've, we have refused to fund players as well, mm. uh, not for any other reason other than we didn't feel that. Uh, Pride Builder would, would would benefit from uh, from sponsoring those players. Yeah. Uh, See, well, I, I think that's good to wear. It's good to wear that it, it is a decision made by Pride Builder. It's not just yes, 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 yes. You know, it's good that you are actually, you know, looking at each case on its own merit. And if it's good, it's good. If it's not, maybe it's not. So you know, Definitely. that's a positive thing. And somebody pays in. It's good to hear that, you know, that it's it's a thought process. It's not just yeah, yeah, yeah. So that, yeah, that's great. Yeah, we, we we never argue about the the pedigree of the players or the ability of the players. That's down to Stuart. Uh, Stuart yeah. wouldn't, uh, wouldn't be asking us uh, to lend a hand. It's just that some players we don't think would have fit the uh, the private or the profile, if you like. Mm. So we we, we, yeah. we weren't able to offer them, but. Yeah. Uh, we, we certainly don't. What we certainly don't do is just hand money over to the club and say, "There you go. You know, there's there's some money for uh, for this month." We it's all fully documented. Uh, the money, if they come from uh, on, on loan, then we we see the uh, documentation from the the parent club. Uh, anybody who comes uh, <clears throat> on contract, we get to see the uh, the non confidential parts. Uh, of the contract, uh, so it's all checked over. Uh, sometimes I'm a bit of a, a thorn in the side with the club, really, because I'm I, I'm a bit of a stickler as to sticking to exactly why the money's given and where the money why the money goes. Mm. Uh, not to say the other two lads aren't, by the way. Uh, it's just that uh, I, I I just uh, I like an argument. Maybe I don't know. Not uh, right. Absolutely, it's, uh, it's got to be right. It's a, it's a lot of money. It's an awful lot of money. Twenty, about twenty-five thousand pounds a year. Uh, previous chairman have said, well, it wasn't, you know, it wasn't very much. It wasn't very much. Well, it was, it was, it was very much when he was on the phone asking for it. Uh, it was, it was a deal breaker. But uh, yeah, twenty-five thousand a year at, at the moment is a lot. And this year, well, twenty twenty-one, we've been able to. To, to really ramp it up because we've not spent that much through the year. We've been able to build up yeah. a little bit, a little bit more. So that's why we can we can see the quality of of say look, Martin Ridyard. We know what Martin Ridyard can do on the pitch. Yeah. But what yeah. Martin Ridyard can do in training, off the pitch, with the other young lads that have come through, mm. that's it, it. It's priceless. That 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 is money money well spent. Yeah, I think that, that's the sort of signing for me. And I said this at the time, he's, he's almost bigger than the sum of his parts. It's like he, he, he's an organiser, he's a top, top player. He can kick, he can do everything. But for me, it's the experience that he brings into this squad that is going to pay for itself, not this season, not necessarily next season, but in two or three seasons' time when these young lads that have played with him, that have seen what he's like as a professional, for me, that is it is money well spent for the club going forward. So, yeah, I'll take my hats off to you all from that. Um, so, uh, other than Ryan Bailey, who did you stop uh, Swinton signing then? <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm, I'm, you don't have to answer that one. I'm only joking there. <laughs> um, yeah, and if Ryan Bailey's lawyers are listening, I don't know that. It is a joke. So, uh, it's right. Yeah. yeah. Right, Bailey's not listening. Never mind. <laughs> he never listened to anybody, did he? So, it don't matter. Um, <laughs> Brilliant. So yeah, just going back, 
sorry, sorry, Bailey, uh, Barney, going back to the amount, I just think 20, I know, sorry, uh, I'm not great with names, so if I call you something else, just live with it. Uh, it yeah, going back to the amount, the 25,000, I, I think pound for pound, that has got to be one of the best pride builders or whatever you want to call the type thing, funds that go towards a club separate, that has got to be pound for pound one of the best amounts of money raised in a year. Because mm. obviously we all know there's not many Swinton fans, but when things come up like this, Swinton fans will absolutely jump on board. Mm. Some may give a little, some may give a lot, but most people will chip in and, and fund these ideas. And like I say, I think £25,000 a year is not to be sniffed at. That is a large amount of money in our division. Mm. You know, that, it's just fantastic. Yeah, well, I mean, we've got, so we've got play, uh, uh, fans from uh, from other clubs uh, who've sent money over and, and prizes and stuff. Mm. Uh, name escapes me from old KR, please. Yeah, the, Matt, the big tall dude. Yeah, oh, God. Right. Oh. Uh, what's his name? Yeah, I know, I know who you mean, but like I said, I don't know. Still the same, but yeah. I, I mean, he says he does. He runs the life for the kids charity, uh, yet he still finds time to send us stuff over mm. to uh, to wrap. Yeah. He sent us signed some signed pictures over uh, the other week of uh, Paul Gallon. Right, uh, that was by one by one of the ex Swinton fans, ex Swinton player actually, uh, who was that made up that he got it for that price. He actually threw an extra uh, fifty quid, I think it was. Wow. In, in, on top of what he'd already paid, uh, so. I'm going to shout his name out any minute. Any minute, it'll come <laughs> brilliant. I think the impressive thing for me, if you look at it, we've got about 108 members. Did you say? And we're raising 25 grand a year. That's like 250 quid a member. That I mean, that is absolutely. Obviously, on average, yeah. we get the ones that throw throw stuff <laughs> in the, the thing. But I mean, to me, yeah. to me that uh, there's no club in the world that the fans would stand up in the way that our fans do. And we've been through the ringer. We know it. We've had the Hueys era up at Berry. We've been here, there and everywhere. We've had, we've seen untold misery. And the fact is that we're still here. We're still fighting. And yeah, we might not play in the town that we bear the name of. And I know that um, certain ex-chairman this week put uh, 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 something on Facebook moaning about the fact that uh, we're not in the town that we're in and his new little venture is. Um, but, for me, it doesn't matter where we play. I, I, if we play on Blue Ribbon, if we play on Booth Town FC, I'm not bothered. I'm turning up and I'm caring just as much about that club as I did when they were playing on Station Road. Because it is, yeah, it's the badge you follow. It's not necessarily that where, where, the, where the team plays. Even to the point where I'm really looking forward to the women's team. I think the women's team is going to be absolutely fantastic. Because uh, for me, my daughter plays league anyway. Um, and well, she plays League and Union, but don't hold that against me. Um, and uh, she plays down at Miners at the moment, and they've got an amazing girl set up at Miners, but they can't play Super League because they're not affiliated to a club. So if Swinton get into Super League, she's even said to me, I might think about it then. She's only 15 at the moment, but she plays like she plays at a decent level for 15. Yeah. But, so, I mean, do, do you see the Pride Builder, Tim? Do you see them branching out in future years to help out with the women's team and the, and the players that they've brought in? Uh, we've never really looked at it, to right. be honest. The, the, I mean, the women's team is, is pretty new. We've not, not even played the game yet. <laughs> uh, I don't know. That, that might be something more uh, that the supporters trust might be might yeah. be better towards it. I mean, there, there are other ways we can help. Mm. Uh, you know, without just financial aid, you know, uh, we all do. We all do an awful lot for uh, for Swin, as you as you just said, Barney. Oh, yeah. uh, not not just financially. Uh, mm. We all put our hands up when when anything ever needs doing. Put your hand up. I mean, I, I've been running the corporate uh, uh, corporate meet and greet downstairs for uh, for a few years, so a lot of people will, will know me probably for wearing a suit and tie. Mm. Uh, during the game, I haven't won just flash. It was just to, to try and add a bit of a uh, a stronger image for the club. Mm. Uh, I'd, I'd sooner wear these, to be honest, on, on a match day. But <laughs> there you go. Uh, but like I said, we've all we've all put our hands up. We've all done stuff. 
uh, over the years. And, uh, and, and, and like I say, that's, that's the kind of club it is. That's the kind of fans that we have. And, and that rubs off on the players. Definitely mm. rubs off on the players. The players feel that they're part of it rather than just playing for it. Yeah, that's, that's brilliant. That. And that's, that's, yeah. for, for, as a fan, you, I think you can see that. You can see that the lads like like enjoy it, and like like Wayne mentioned uh, last time we did a, a podcast um, that we we like the, the players will add you on Facebook, and it's like they'll have a laugh with you, and they'll take the mick out of you. And like Josh Barlow's tweeted Wayne this week saying he's going to smash his face in, and um, it's, <laughs> <laughs> he's not really. He's basically saying that like Josh. Yeah. I mean, I'm not scared. I've just changed my number anyway, so it doesn't matter. <laughs> there it is. That's why. Go on, Tim. Sorry. That, that's why he's got on those those drinks. <laughs> just get his drink. Just stay sober. Stay, stay sober. That, that's it. But yeah, so even like Tim. Tim, who would have ever have thought that I would talk myself into trouble? Who ever seen that coming? <laughs> not, not, not with Josh Barlow, no. In <laughs> fact. Perhaps I've seen a I've seen a, a photograph of him today uh, with him, his dad, and uh, and uh, Sam Barlow all out shooting yeah. with shotguns. But I was expecting to see Wayne sort of like on a target somewhere yeah. picture while they were blasting away. Yeah, I, I, Tim, 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 all joking apart, you're shitting us, aren't you? There, you know what I mean? <laughs> no, I we're, no, we're no. expecting people coming with guns. <laughs> oh, mate. Have I, told you, have I told you that Josh is the best player to ever grace a rugby league field? And that even includes in the NRL. Really? He is simply the best. Yeah. The thought to you is that he's not as good at shooting as he is at rugby. <laughs> you better hope so, yeah. yeah. It's probably the worst shot in Yorkshire. <laughs> but, uh, anyway, I feel this is going down a path where I certainly don't want it to go down. So I'm going to bring it back to Pride Builder. And we're going to say, Tim, I think it's fantastic. Do you want to give people a shout out to how they can actually join if they're not a member, how they get involved, what sort of amounts they can do and how they do it? It's, it's dead simple. Uh, either look for us on uh, Facebook, just type in uh, Swinton Lines Pride Builder uh, and you'll, you'll find your way there. Uh, and basically, we'll just give you the bank uh, account number, sort code, uh, and you set up a bank transfer, whichever way you want to do it, uh, for however much you want to do it. I mean, it, it's fantastic that, you know, we've got play, uh, people who put quite large amounts in, but you don't get rich by one person putting one large amount in. Mm. You get you get rich by lots of people putting small amounts in. Uh, yeah. Any, anything a, a fiver, a fiver a month, hundred people, it's a lot of money. It's a yeah. lot of money a month. That's it. That's it. It's about five hundred. If you if you look really carefully as well, I'm sure you can find um, Reese's phone number scribbled in the uh, in the men's toilets in most pubs that you go in. So uh, I think that's uh, I think that's another place you can find it as well. Right. well. That. Yeah, no, Denise goes round and right in. Oh, it is Denise. <laughs> but he's right in that <laughs> Yeah, sorry, Reese and Denise. I am joking. I know that that is a, that is a joke. That don't hit me too hard. <laughs> shameless, shameless fine. Oh, <laughs> isn't it shameless? To say anything for ratings, mate. So, oh, well, yeah, you no, can no. believe it. So yeah. All good fun. Um, I can clearly tell that the old drinks are kicking in with you two now, and I'm going to have to step in. Hey, you know what I mean? Top, I knew it would end up. Mine. Top still. Oh, oh, oh. To be true professional true. there, Tim. True sure. professional. I've, yeah. I've, 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 I was going to go and get myself another drink in a minute, but I thought I'd be rude if Tim was talking at us. But... Oh, yeah. <laughs> Sweating out your head, but... My missus yeah. is upstairs, and I can't even call her down to go and get ask me to uh, microwave me another one. <laughs> but yeah, never mind. Tough man. times. So, uh, bleak midwinter. That's it. You're not better believe it. So right, um, is there anything else that you sort of want to tell us about Prime Builder, or are we? Pretty- uh, I've just skimmed down my list there. Make sure I've got uh, everything in. No, I think I've got everything in. Really, I really wanted to say. Uh, well, you're both other, professional other, with me and Wayne already. Other than, 
once more, a massive, massive thanks to everybody that's put even a penny in. Mm. Uh, if they've just had one go on the name card, uh, one of, you know, whatever, whatever. There's people, like I say, who, who've had to come out with a minute for one thing or another. Our times, it's our times in a minute. We'll welcome you back the, the minute you can, uh, you're comfortable to come back. Uh, we'd like to see more members. Mm. Of course, we could. We're not expecting medicals at the minute, but as as uh, things change next year, as as we hope they will, uh, then we can uh, we can look towards you know trying to get a bit more money in, try to increase the uh, the number or the quality of players, uh, and and the, the thing is as well that we've got five five players there. Other players see those five players and think, "I want to play with them." Mm. So, yeah. even though we don't pay for them, we can attract them. Yeah. The club can attract them by having those uh, that standard of player there, uh, and that you, you, you attract the standard of player. You attract you you, you you get the interest of the public, thinking, "Well, uh, yeah, I'll go down. I'll go down and watch a game. See see him play." I mean, how many people go down and say that I'm, I'm going to watch somebody called Jim Ronnie? Well, you've got to go down and see what he's like anyway, haven't you? Yeah, yeah. In case he jumps, well, starts yeah. jumping off the stands. <laughs> yeah. Uh, blood blood yeah. curdling your eyes and things like that. I don't know. But if we, can, if we can attract the players and we attract the fans, we're attracting more money to the club in, in the other coffers. Mm. So it's, it's all a win-win situation. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Really I, cool. want, I want to see people in the comments. I want you to watch this video, listen to what Tim says. I think it's fantastic. I want you to watch the video and join Pride Builder. It doesn't matter how much it is, just join up, put your name in the comments, say you joined Pride Builder because you watched the video. We'll give you the shout out on the next video. And I think to Tim, Reese, and Dave, fantastic work you're doing with a Pride Builder. It clearly has kicked in this year to show fans what it really does do. So, like I say, thanks to the three of you for running it. Thanks for coming on the show, Tim. You're probably going to have loads of messages now of fans and everything. So it's probably going to change your life, this, Tim. <laughs> well, if you want to message me personally, then that's, that's fine as well. Uh, if you can't find the page, look me up. Uh, I'm not going to put my me, uh, me phone number on because uh, <laughs> that'll just be written on the toilet while we're Manchester as well. Uh, <laughs> Brilliant. Well, contact, contact us anyway you can. Uh, we just give you the number. You set it up. That's it. It's all down to you. Superb. That's Perfect. Good. Yeah, yeah. Th thanks for that, Tim. Thanks for coming on as well, mate. Um, I think, like I say, the, the way that our club works, and yeah, we're, we're, and I've said this time and time again, we are a family, and sometimes we rub each other up the wrong way and stuff like that. I can remember a few years ago, I think I, uh, I probably rubbed you up the wrong way, Tim. I think you told me to go myself. And uh, but uh, it's like in a nice way, yeah, on a nice way, yeah. I in think, nice but, and that's the thing I love about being a Swinton fan. You can have them rattles, and then the lads run out in the field on a Sunday afternoon at three o'clock, and it's all forgotten, and it's and then it's it, it's brilliant. So, and I mean, the, the three of you, thank you very much, because I, I mean, I probably out of the three of you that run Pride Builder, I probably know you least, Tim. Um, so it's actually been really nice to sort of get you on here and have a bit of a chat with you and get to know you a little bit better. Um, because I know Dave Roberts really well, and I'm not, I know obviously living near Reese, I know him quite well as well. Every time we walk to Shabazz, we bump into Reese and Denise, so it's uh, it's not too bad, but um, so yeah, so thank you very much for coming on. Um, thank you for everything that you do for the club. Um, and what I'll do is if we get sort of offers of any help and support or anything like that, uh, that isn't of a sort of monetary value, I'll make sure that they get th uh, thrown your way. Um, so even sort of as far to say as like books of stamps and stuff like that, I'll what I'll try and do is if anybody's got any spare book like stamps and stuff, I'll get them to you because then anything that you do have to send in the post, it makes your life a little bit easier. So we'll we'll do that as well. Um, so yeah, so thank you very much for coming on. Just a couple of shout outs um, before we go. Um, I want to say thank you to a couple of people. Um, firstly, uh, Ian Bailey. Now, I know that uh, Wayne Wayne spent uh, a, quite a long time on the phone to Ian after we, like, we'd done the first few uh, podcasts. 
Um, and Ian's a top lad, and he, he he tells it like he is, like it is. And he said some really nice things. He sent me some messages as well. Um, so thanks, thanks, Ian. Thanks for that, Ian. <laughs> Ian, who's Ian? Thanks, Bailey. Um, well, see, now he's struggling with the names. Yeah, well, it's yeah. not just me. No, well, no, I'm going to get the Definitely, no, big... Uh, Go on. Sorry, definitely a big shout-out to him. Like you say, he speaks to me. He's given up watching mainstream TV, so this is the perfect solution for him. There you go. What more could he want? Exactly. I'm going to get my little lad into singing his song in a minute. It's my little lad's favourite song, along with We Never Win At Home and We Never Win Away. So uh, it's... Uh, I'll get him... I'll get, no, I won't. Uh, my missus will kill me if he... Oh, I was going to say, oh, Tim could get one of them <laughs> fake guitars out. So, yeah. I mean, it's serious, so this is... A, we're nowhere of a line. A little lad only comes to Swinton Games because he likes listening to the swear words that people say. And I think that's standing near Chrissy Allen that's done that, because he says some absolutely ridiculous <laughs> things. So, I can still talk. <laughs> yeah. So, um, yeah, so anyway, yeah, so thank you to, uh, thank you to Bailey. Um, also, um, this might come as a bit of a surprise, but Marshy really likes the show. So uh, I've had a couple of... Yes. Uh, yeah, I've had a couple of messages off Marshy. And, I'm, and Marshy's another one that I'm good mates with. Um, and uh, he so he sent us a couple of messages. So what is my full name? Uh, sorry, Alan Alan Marshall of uh, Alan Marshall, whatever it is he does, accountants or whatever it is. Um, so, for all your taxation needs. Um, so yeah, so uh, so yeah, so Marshy's uh, like sent me some messages, and also Spelly. Um, Spelly sent me uh, Wayne English's phone number actually. Um, so we're going to see if we can sort of get Wayne English on. Um, oh, fantastic! Yeah, which will be you can never have too many Waynes. No, well that's it, isn't it? I mean, I, I thought I'd met the only Wayne in the world when I met you, Wayne, and then uh, get Wayne English as well comes along. So, all good. Yeah, I'm not really sure I like the sound of that, but carry on. <laughs> well, yeah. So, um, yeah, like I say, I want to say thank you, thank you to Tim, obviously. Um, thank you for the nice messages off everybody. Oh, Spelly sent me a message as well. Uh, everybody knows Spelly, don't they? Um, he sent me a message over Messenger the other day. Um, so, yeah. Um, oh, I said that, didn't I? So, yeah, thank you. That's that brandy. That <laughs> <laughs> um, so, I'm going to go and finish the rest of it now. Anyway, um, thank you very much for that. Um, and, yeah, anything else to add to that, Wayne? Again, just thanks to Tim for coming on. I think it's gone great. Hopefully... You've given a lot of information out there. I'd like to wish you and all the Pride Build a lot and Happy New Year. And we'll hopefully see you again very soon. Very soon, yeah. The same, uh, the same to you two and uh, and all the fans out there as well. Yeah. In fact, all the fans from Belize. Yes, really. Yeah, yeah. No, I'd agree with that. Yeah. Well, most of them. Most of them. Well, yeah, yeah. Well, we've said, I said that on the Christmas episode. I sort of nearly didn't say Merry Christmas to them, <laughs> and I bottled it and went, yeah. but. Seriously, I just hope we get back playing and uh, then I hope we get Rochdale in the cup. Um, so, yeah, so all good fun. Um, right. Thank you very much. Happy New Year from the station, Roaders. Um, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm going to stop the recording now. I'll have a quick chat with Tim and Wayne just before we, uh, we disappear off. <laughs> Happy New Year, everybody. See you later.